I was always my aunt's favorite, but after my dad got sick, she made a move that shocked me, and then I? I'm Lucas, 25 years old, living in a quiet neighborhood where everyone knows everyone, which only makes it harder to deal with what's happening in my family. My dad, Max, is 52, and my mom, Leah, is 50. They've always been supportive, loving, and close to me, especially during my years in college and the early stages of my career. But everything shifted last year when dad was diagnosed with a rare, aggressive disease. Suddenly, the person I'd always seen as strong and capable needed help with even the smallest tasks, and it left a hole in all of us, especially mom. She's been his rock through everything, but I can see the toll it's taking on her. She tries to hide it, but her exhaustion is written all over her face. When dad first got sick, Aunt Celeste, dad's older sister, who's 55, swooped in with a surprising amount of energy and dedication. She's always been part of our lives, but not in this all-encompassing way. Before, she was more of an occasional figure, the fun, stylish aunt who'd pop in with gifts and stories from her travels. Celeste is charismatic, with an elegance that I used to find admirable. She's beautiful, in that timeless, old Hollywood kind of way, with flawless skin and a confidence that fills every room she enters. In a way, she's always been this slightly larger-than-life figure in my life. She was never married long. She had a couple of short marriages but no kids, and she seemed perfectly content on her own. She was the type who hosted Christmas dinners at her place and gave me expensive, thoughtful gifts on my birthdays, like leather-bound journals and rare records she knew I'd love. She's always had this way of making me feel like I was her favorite person in the world, showering me with compliments and attention whenever I was around. At family gatherings, her gaze would follow me with a warmth that felt both comforting and a little overwhelming, but I chalked it up to her eccentric personality. After Dad's diagnosis, though, her involvement intensified. At first, it felt like a blessing. She offered to handle scheduling doctor's appointments, coordinating treatments, and even helping out with the immense medical bills that came our way. We were grateful, of course. Having her handle so many of these practicalities gave us more time to focus on spending quality moments with Dad without drowning in the administrative side of his illness. She started showing up almost every day, often unannounced, bringing prepared meals that were always presented beautifully, like she'd put hours into each dish just for us. She made Mom take breaks, insisting she was taking over so that Mom could go rest or take a walk to clear her mind. At first, I saw it as a sign of genuine love for Dad. After all, it was her brother. But as the months wore on, it began to feel like she was there more for me than for him. The first time I noticed something off was a month or two into Dad's diagnosis. Celeste had come over with a full dinner, more than we could possibly eat, but she had it all set up on the table with fine china she brought herself. She insisted on staying while we ate, hovering around to refill drinks and clear plates almost immediately after we'd finished a bite. When she sat down next to me, she rested her hand on my shoulder as she laughed at something I'd said. A casual touch, but it lingered a little too long, her fingers brushing just lightly enough to send a strange, uncomfortable tingle up my spine. It felt like she was studying me, watching for my reaction, but I brushed it off, assuming she was just overcompensating for the tension we were all under. That night, after she left, I tried to shake off the weird feeling, reminding myself that she was just trying to be helpful and that I was probably overthinking it. But these moments kept happening. The next time, she commented on my mature appearance, mentioning how I'd grown into such a handsome young man. I remember feeling my face flush, which seemed ridiculous. I shouldn't feel that way from a compliment from my aunt. But it wasn't what she said that made me uncomfortable. It was how she said it with this almost pensive look that lingered, as if she was admiring me in a way that didn't quite feel right. She didn't break eye contact right away, and the silence that followed felt thick and strange. I laughed it off, saying, Well, thanks, Aunt Celeste, in a joking tone, hoping to diffuse whatever weird tension I was sensing. She just smiled, though, this tight-lipped smile that didn't reach her eyes. I tried bringing it up with Mom, but she brushed it off immediately, saying, oh, that's just Celeste. You know she's always been a little dramatic. It was true. Celeste was known for her flair and her tendency to be over the top. So, 
I convinced myself that I was being paranoid, but the pattern continued, and soon it became harder to ignore. Each visit, she'd find some excuse to linger close to me, whether it was fixing a stray piece of lint on my shirt or leaning in too close when talking, under the pretense of whispering, so dad wouldn't hear about some surprise she was planning. One day, she invited me to her house to escape the heaviness at home, suggesting that a break would do me good. I felt obligated to accept, especially after everything she was doing for us. When I arrived, though, it didn't feel like a break. It felt like a performance. She prepared my favorite dishes, set up her living room like a cozy lounge, and insisted on sitting right next to me, even though there was plenty of room on the other side of the couch. She asked me about my love life, a topic she'd never shown much interest in before, and she listened with an intensity that was, frankly, unnerving. When I mentioned I hadn't been dating much lately, she nodded, almost sympathetically, before saying, a man like you shouldn't be alone too long. You deserve someone who understands you deeply. There was a slight pause, and for a second, I thought she might have been hinting at herself, but the thought was absurd, and I immediately shoved it aside, feeling embarrassed for even thinking it. Then came the incident with the photo. She'd always been a big fan of family pictures, and over the years, she'd amassed a huge collection of photos, some of which she displayed in her home. On this particular visit, she brought out a framed photo of me as a teenager, around 16, and told me how handsome I'd been even back then. She kept going on about my smile, how she could tell I was a sensitive soul, and all these oddly personal compliments that made me squirm in my seat. I tried to laugh it off, to redirect the conversation, but she kept coming back to it. She even showed me some newer photos she'd taken without me realizing, candid shots from family gatherings or holidays, as though she'd been cataloging me. By this point, I couldn't deny that her attention felt invasive. I wanted to bring it up with Dad, but he was so grateful for her support that I feared he wouldn't take me seriously. To him, she was just his caring sister who'd stepped up in his time of need, and the last thing I wanted was to make him worry or feel guilty for relying on her. But the incidents kept piling up, and her comments became increasingly personal, to the point where I started actively avoiding being alone with her. Still, I couldn't shake this awful feeling that she wanted something more from me, something I couldn't even fully understand or articulate. I told myself that as long as she was helping my dad, I could put up with her quirks. But deep down, a part of me was already dreading what might happen if her behavior kept escalating. Celeste's visits increased steadily over the following months, and with each one, she became more woven into our daily lives. My dad, Max, had started needing round-the-clock care, and between my mom, Leah, and me, it was exhausting. Celeste's help felt essential. She would take care of the grocery shopping, make phone calls to doctors, and handle an ever-growing stack of medical bills. It was a relief, to be honest. With her there, my mom and I could spend more time with dad, focusing on comforting him instead of being bogged down by the mountain of logistics that came with his illness. But with each visit, Celeste's presence felt a little more overbearing. She'd always been dedicated and attentive, but now she seemed determined to insert herself into every aspect of our lives. It started with little things, like her insistence on checking in on me every day. At first, she called to ask if I needed anything or if I wanted a break. You're such a good son, she'd say. It's so rare to see that these days, her praise felt genuine at first, but after a while, it began to feel like flattery with an edge, as though she were hinting at something she wasn't saying outright. And then there were the constant invites to her house. You need to get away from all this, she'd insist. Take some time to clear your head. I've got that guest room set up just for you, you know? It's waiting whenever you want a peaceful night away. Her home was a short drive away from ours, and although she'd always kept it neat and welcoming, it now felt like an oddly curated space, prepared specifically to pull me in. She had stocked the fridge with my favorite foods, left books she knew I liked scattered around, and had even set up a cozy reading nook in the guest room, which I knew she had arranged just for me. It was the invitation to her lake house, though, that made me stop and think about her intentions. Lucas, she began one evening as she was helping clear the dishes after dinner. I was thinking, wouldn't it be nice to spend a weekend at the lake house? Just you and me, getting some fresh air, away from all this stress. 
You've been so strong for your dad. You deserve a break. Her voice was soft, almost coaxing, and I could see her watching me carefully, waiting for my reaction. The lake house was somewhere we'd gone as a family a few times when I was a kid, a secluded place that felt worlds away from everyday life. But something about the way she proposed it made my stomach turn. I felt trapped by her kindness. How could I refuse when she was doing so much for us? And yet, the thought of spending a weekend alone with her in an isolated house filled me with dread. I mumbled something about being too busy, and she seemed to accept it, but the invitation lingered in the air, unspoken, as if it was only a matter of time before she'd ask again. The more she inserted herself into our lives, the more her behavior started to feel intrusive. She'd begun bringing over photo albums of us when we were younger, slipping in pictures of me during random moments at family gatherings, a few of them clearly candid shots she must have taken without me knowing. She'd comment on them, her fingers tracing the edges of each photo as she reminisced. I've always had a special place in my heart for you, Lucas, she'd say, looking at me with that same intense gaze that was becoming more and more unsettling. You're different. You're caring, sensitive, unlike anyone else. I'd force a smile and change the subject, but every time I tried, she'd find a way to steer the conversation back to me, to how I was handling everything, to how she thought I was stronger than even I knew. I tried talking to mom about it, gently hinting that maybe Aunt Celeste's constant presence was a bit much, but my mom seemed almost defensive about it. She's family, Lucas, mom would say, brushing off my concerns. Your aunt is doing everything she can to help us. You know how much this is costing us. Without her, I don't know how we'd be managing all of this. And it was true. Celeste's financial support was significant. She'd offered to cover several rounds of experimental treatments for dad, which were far beyond what we could afford on our own. Even I felt guilty for questioning her intentions. She'd become indispensable, and my dad never stopped singing her praises. He'd say, Your Aunt Celeste is an angel. Not everyone would drop their life like she has. Hearing dad's gratitude made it harder to voice any misgivings I had, and I began to feel as if I were stuck in an unspoken debt to her, obligated to tolerate whatever eccentricities she brought with her. But each visit seemed to blur the boundaries between her role as my aunt and something else entirely. One evening, she showed up with a bottle of wine, her eyes gleaming with excitement. Just for you and me, she said pulling me into the kitchen while my mom sat with dad in the living room. She poured two glasses and handed one to me, her hand lingering as she passed it over. I took a sip, feeling an odd mix of gratitude and discomfort. I wasn't used to drinking alone with her, but she seemed to relish the moment, acting like we were two friends enjoying a quiet evening rather than family dealing with a tragedy. She started asking deeply personal questions about my relationships, prying for details about girls I dated or women I was interested in. I just want you to be with someone who appreciates you, she'd say with a soft, almost protective smile. It was uncomfortable, but every time I tried to sidestep her questions, she'd just chuckle and press on. I felt cornered, like she was pulling me into a strange, intimate space that I hadn't consented to enter. Her insistence on these breaks became relentless. She'd text me at odd hours, always with the same tone, reminding me that she was there for me, that I could always escape to her place if things got too overwhelming. At one point, she even sent me a message late at night, saying, Lucas, I think about you often. You're so much stronger than you know. You don't have to carry this alone. Let me be there for you. The words felt heavy, their meaning stretching beyond what an aunt might normally say to her nephew. I sat there staring at the screen, feeling a coldness seep into me. What was she expecting from me? Was this just her strange way of showing care, or was it something more? Things reached a peak when she came by one afternoon while I was home alone. She had a new photo she wanted to show me, a picture she'd framed of us from my high school graduation, one where she stood beside me, her arm draped over my shoulders. I remembered the day, remembered the feeling of pride and love, but seeing it now, in her hands, felt wrong. I was so proud of you that day, she murmured, looking at me with an expression that seemed almost mournful. I've always been proud of you. She moved closer, close enough that I could feel her breath on my shoulder, and I took a step back, trying to laugh it off. Thanks, Aunt Celeste, I said, 
keeping my tone light, but I knew she noticed my discomfort. Her face fell, and she seemed almost hurt. For a moment, I thought she might leave, but instead, she straightened, flashing me one of her radiant smiles. I know it's been hard on you, Lucas, she said softly. I only want to make things easier. If you ever feel like you can't take it here, just come to me. You know you can always rely on me. Her words seemed to hold a weight, a promise that went beyond simple family support. It was as if she were offering herself, fully, without boundaries or limitations. I felt a creeping unease that made me want to leave the room, but her gaze held me in place, trapping me with the sense of obligation that I knew I could never repay. After she left, I sat alone, trying to piece together my thoughts. I didn't know how to feel. Part of me was grateful for everything she'd done, for the way she'd supported us when we needed it most. But another part of me felt exposed, like her attention was a spotlight I couldn't escape. I couldn't shake the feeling that her generosity came with strings attached, strings that were tightening around me, binding me to her in ways I couldn't understand or escape from. It was late in the evening, and I had just settled into my room, hoping to unwind for a bit, when there was a knock at the door. Glancing at the clock, I was a little surprised. Visitors weren't exactly common at this hour, and my first thought was that something had gone wrong with Dad. I rushed down the stairs, only to find Aunt Celeste standing there, smiling with a kind of intensity that instantly set my nerves on edge. Hey, Lucas, she said, her voice soft yet brimming with some strange energy. I thought it might be nice to take a little drive. I know it's late, but I was nearby and figured you might need a change of scenery. I hesitated, caught off guard by the unexpected invitation. A drive with Celeste? At this hour? Still, she was standing there, practically radiating expectation, and I felt compelled to agree. After everything she'd been doing for our family, it felt wrong to say no. We drove in near silence for the first few minutes. I kept expecting her to bring up Dad or the latest medical appointments, but instead, she seemed content to let the silence linger. The streets were mostly empty, giving the night a strange, surreal feel, and my unease only grew as the minutes ticked by. Finally, as we reached a quiet stretch of road away from the city lights, Celeste spoke. Lucas, she began, her voice low, almost like she was trying to lull me into some kind of calm. I've been thinking a lot about you lately, about everything you're going through. She glanced over at me, her eyes studying me with that same strange intensity I'd come to recognize. You know, it's not easy, carrying this weight on your shoulders. Watching your father suffer. You've been so selfless, so strong. But, she let the sentence trail off, leaving a heavy silence between us. Thanks, I replied cautiously, not entirely sure where this was going. It's been hard, but I'm managing. We're managing. I try to keep my tone neutral, hoping she'd steer back to something more ordinary, but her gaze didn't waver. That's exactly what I mean, Lucas, she said, her voice growing softer. You're giving everything to your family, to your father, and it's admirable. But you're young. You deserve to have your own life, your own future. Have you thought about that? I stared at her, caught off guard by her words. I mean, yeah, of course. But right now, my family's my priority. Dad's my priority. I felt a knot form in my stomach, wondering why she was bringing this up now, of all times. She let out a small sigh, almost as if she were disappointed, but then she smiled, leaning in closer to me. Lucas, there are so many things I could offer you. Support, guidance, even financial help. All for you to pursue your dreams, whatever they might be. You're an incredible person, and you shouldn't feel obligated to put your entire life on hold for your father. I blinked, feeling more confused than ever. I appreciate everything you've done, Aunt Celeste, really? But this is my family. It's what I have to do. She nodded slowly, like she was absorbing my words, but there was a strange glint in her eye that made me feel uneasy. I understand that. But sometimes, to move forward, you have to make hard decisions about who you rely on. She reached over and touched my hand her fingers cold yet insistent as they curled over mine. You could rely on me, Lucas. Completely. I want to be the person you turn to, the one who supports you in everything without question. A chill ran down my spine as her hand lingered on mine, 
and I gently pulled away, trying to keep my tone casual. That, that means a lot, Aunt Celeste. I just, I'm still trying to understand what you're getting at. She took a deep breath, and then, as if deciding to abandon whatever subtlety she'd been holding onto, she looked straight at me. What I'm saying, Lucas, is that I could be everything you need. More than just an aunt. Someone who could make sure you're cared for, both financially and emotionally. Her voice was calm, almost soothing, but her words hit me like a punch. I couldn't speak. My mind raced, scrambling to make sense of what she just said. Did she, did she mean what I thought she meant? I forced myself to look away, out the window, trying to process the reality of her words. This was my aunt, my dad's sister. And yet, here she was, suggesting something that felt like it crossed a line, as if she saw herself as more than just family. The silence stretched painfully until she spoke again, her voice breaking the tension. I know this is a lot, Lucas, but you don't have to answer right away. Just think about it. She reached into her bag, pulling out a small envelope and placing it in my lap. Here, take this. It's for you, in case you need anything. No strings attached. I glanced down at the envelope, feeling a pit form in my stomach. It was thick, filled with what I could only assume was cash. My throat tightened as I turned to her, feeling trapped. Aunt Celeste, I... Sure, she murmured, cutting me off gently. You don't have to say anything now. I just want you to know that you're not alone. And if things ever get too much at home, if you ever need a place to escape to, she smiled the same smile she'd given me when she'd suggested the lake house. Just say the word. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. Every instinct in me screamed to get out of the car, to put distance between us, but I felt paralyzed, rooted to the spot by her calm, almost maternal tone. I forced myself to take a breath, pushing down the nausea that threatened to rise. Thanks, Aunt Celeste, but I don't. I don't think I need this. I handed the envelope back to her keeping my gaze fixed out the window to avoid seeing the disappointment in her eyes. After a tense silence, she took the envelope, tucking it back into her bag with a sigh. Just know the offers there, Lucas, she said quietly. I only want what's best for you. The rest of the drive was silent, the weight of her words hanging heavily between us. When we finally pulled up to my house, I muttered a quick goodbye, practically stumbling out of the car in my hurry to escape. As I watched her drive away, the reality of what had just happened settled over me like a dark cloud. I couldn't shake the feeling that she'd crossed a line, that her kindness had transformed into something far more complicated and disturbing. My aunt, the woman who'd helped raise me, who'd been there through some of the most important moments of my life, wasn't just offering support. She was offering herself. Back inside, I paced my room, replaying the conversation in my mind trying to convince myself that I'd misunderstood. But every word she'd said, every look she'd given me, pointed to something undeniable. She wanted more for me than any aunt should. And with her influence over my dad's treatment, her financial support that kept our family afloat, I felt caught in an impossible web. If I rejected her, if I told her outright that her behavior was unacceptable, there was a chance she'd pull her help, leaving us stranded in the middle of my father's illness. But how could I continue accepting her support, knowing the twisted expectations she attached to it? The next day, I tried to talk to mom again, hoping she'd take my concerns seriously this time. But when I hinted at Celeste's possessive behavior, mom only shrugged, saying, Lucas, I know your aunt can be a bit intense, but she means well. She's just trying to help. I could tell that she didn't fully grasp the extent of what I was dealing with and I wasn't sure how to make her understand without revealing everything. And so, I kept quiet, letting the pressure build as I wrestled with what to do. Aunt Celeste continued visiting regularly, slipping back into her usual role as if that night's conversation had never happened. But her eyes would meet mine with a knowing look, a silent reminder of her offer. Every visit felt like a test, a reminder that she was there, waiting for me to make a choice. A week later, she brought it up again, this time more casually, almost as if it were a normal part of our relationship. You're still thinking about my offer, right? She asked with a soft smile, her tone light and conversational. I nodded stiffly, not trusting myself to say anything more. And as she leaned in, her voice barely above a whisper, 
she added. The lake house is open anytime, Lucas. Just the two of us. No one has to know. Her words hung in the air, filling me with a dread I couldn't shake. After that night's unsettling conversation with Aunt Celeste, I could barely sleep. Every time I closed my eyes, her words replayed in my mind, each one feeling like a small trap tightening around me. The idea of confiding in someone was terrifying, but I knew I couldn't keep carrying the weight of her intentions alone. The only person I felt might understand, even a little, was Dad. One afternoon, I found a moment when Dad was awake and seemed alert. His illness had him in and out of exhaustion, but this day was one of his better ones. He looked weaker than ever, but his eyes were sharp, and when I walked in, he gave me a smile that reminded me of how he'd been before the sickness took its toll. Taking a deep breath, I sat down next to his bed, trying to steady myself. Dad, I, I need to talk to you about something, I began, my voice low and hesitant. I wasn't even sure how to start. How could I explain everything without it sounding insane? Of course, son, he replied, his brow furrowing with concern. What's on your mind? I hesitated, searching for the right words. It's, it's Aunt Celeste. She's been acting really strange. I looked down, twisting my hands together. I mean, more than strange. It's hard to explain, but it's like she's crossing boundaries, things that don't feel normal. His face grew serious and he tilted his head slightly, motioning for me to go on. Boundaries? In what way? Taking a deep breath, I told him about the late night drives, the invitations to her lake house, the odd comments about us being closer than just family. I even mentioned how she'd slipped me an envelope of cash, hinting that I could rely on her completely if I needed. As I spoke, Dad's expression shifted from confusion to something darker, almost pained. When I finally finished, he looked away, a mix of sadness and frustration on his face. After a long silence, he cleared his throat, his voice barely above a whisper. Lucas, I never thought I'd have to talk about this with you. He paused, as if weighing his words carefully. Celeste, she's always had this possessive side, especially with you, even from a young age. After her last divorce, she seemed to cling to you in a way that, I admit, sometimes made me uneasy, but I always convinced myself it was harmless. I thought maybe you filled a void in her life that she'd never managed to fill otherwise, he sighed, his eyes filled with regret. I should have seen it sooner, maybe talk to her about it. But she's my sister, and I thought she was just… lonely. A chill ran through me as his words sank in. He'd noticed her behavior too, but he'd brushed it off as nothing more than loneliness perhaps even seen it as a quirk. It was clear now that he hadn't realized just how deeply her possessiveness ran. Dad, it's more than that, I said, my voice strained. She's acting like she's entitled to me. Like she expects me to be there for her in a way that goes beyond family. And now, with everything she's doing for us, I hesitated, not wanting to hurt him. But he nodded, urging me to continue. It feels like she's using your treatment the support she's giving, as leverage. And if I push her away, she might. She might cut us off. Dad closed his eyes, the weight of my words visibly hitting him. For a moment, I saw his shoulders tense, and he looked smaller, like the strength that had always defined him was being chipped away. Lucas, he said quietly, you shouldn't have to feel trapped, least of all by family. I can't believe she'd go this far. The room was silent as he seemed to wrestle with his thoughts, his hands gripping the edge of the blanket. But the thing is, son, we do need her help. The financial burden has been overwhelming. Without her, I don't know how we'd keep up with the treatments. And she knows that. His voice held a resigned sadness that only deepened the pit in my stomach. I feel like I've put you in an impossible position. Seeing the pain in his eyes, I shook my head. No, Dad. This isn't your fault. She's the one putting us in this position. It's just complicated. I don't know what to do. I don't want to lose her support, but I can't keep pretending everything's normal when it isn't. He reached out, his hand resting weakly on mine. Lucas, listen to me. You do what feels right for you. I would never ask you to sacrifice yourself to keep her happy, 
even if it means we have to find another way. His words were reassuring, but I could see the conflict in his eyes. He wanted to support me, but he also understood the grim reality of our situation. Without Celeste's help, his chances of continuing treatment were slim. That night, I lay awake, turning everything over in my mind. Dad's words had given me a sense of validation, but they hadn't brought me any closer to a solution. Pushing Aunt Celeste away would be risky, not just for me but for my entire family. Yet, the idea of going along with her expectations, of letting her control my life in exchange for her help, felt unbearable. The next few days were tense. Aunt Celeste continued her usual visits, each one feeling like an unspoken challenge. She seemed to sense my hesitation, her gaze sharper, her presence somehow more suffocating than before. She didn't mention the lake house or her offer outright, but there was a strange, possessive look in her eyes every time she caught me alone. It was as if she was waiting, biding her time until I came to her on my own. Meanwhile, she doubled down on her support for dad's treatment. She arranged consultations with specialists, covered expenses we hadn't even anticipated, and ensured that every aspect of his care was the best money could buy. To the outside world, she was the devoted sister, sacrificing everything to support her family, but I knew better. Her support came with a cost, and I was the one paying it. One evening, after another tense dinner, she cornered me as I was clearing the table. Her tone was gentle, her smile patient, but her eyes held a challenge. Lucas, I hope you've been thinking about what we talked about. I know it's a lot to take in, but I only want what's best for you. For us. I felt my hands tremble as I set down a plate, forcing myself to look at her. Aunt Celeste, I appreciate everything you've done for us. Really, I do. But, I don't think I can be what you're asking. Her expression didn't change but I saw something flash in her eyes, something dark and calculating. She moved closer, her voice barely above a whisper. Lucas, I understand your hesitation, but think about it. What other choice do you have? I'm the one keeping your father's treatment going. You know that. She paused, her voice softening. I don't want to pressure you. I'm just saying, don't make things harder than they need to be. We could both get what we want. Her words hung in the air, cold and manipulative, and I felt a surge of anger rise in my chest. But I knew better than to confront her outright. If I pushed back too hard, I risked losing everything she'd been providing for Dad. Instead, I forced a tight smile, nodding slowly, even as my stomach twisted in disgust. As she left that night, I felt a strange sense of dread settle over me, a feeling that things were only going to get worse. Aunt Celeste's influence was like a shadow, creeping over every part of my life, and no matter how hard I tried to shake it off, I felt bound to her, held by invisible strings I couldn't cut. Later, I confided in Dad about her latest comments, desperate for some sort of guidance. But he was weaker now, struggling to stay lucid for long conversations, and all he could do was reach out, his hand trembling as he gave mine a reassuring squeeze. Lucas, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry for putting you through this. I wanted to tell him it wasn't his fault, that he hadn't done anything wrong. But the words felt hollow. The truth was, Aunt Celeste had us both in a stranglehold, and I had no idea how to break free. All I knew was that I couldn't keep going like this, living under her control, caught between her twisted expectations and my family's desperate need for her help. In the days that followed, I tried to keep my distance but Aunt Celeste's presence loomed over everything. Her calls became more frequent, her messages filled with reminders of her support and the countless sacrifices she was making for us. Each one felt like a weight pressing down on me, reminding me that she held our lives in her hands. It was only a matter of time before I'd have to make a choice. Confront her head-on and risk losing everything she provided for Dad, or submit to her expectations, sacrificing my own comfort and boundaries in the process. I knew that no matter what I decided, there would be consequences. But one thing was certain, this was a game I couldn't keep playing. And soon, I'd have to decide how far I was willing to go to protect myself and my family from her grasp. The turning point came one evening when Dad called me into his room, his voice stronger than it had been in weeks. He told me he'd received unexpected news, a charitable foundation had approved him for a grant to cover his next round of treatment. 
The relief hit me like a wave. For the first time, we weren't dependent on Aunt Celeste's help, and I could finally see a way out of her grip. As Dad and I discussed it, we decided that it was time to confront her. No more whispered conversations or subtle hints. She needed to know that her hold on us was broken. When Aunt Celeste arrived the next day, I was waiting. She entered with her usual air of control, her smile sharp as she took in my serious expression. I didn't waste any time. Aunt Celeste, we need to talk, I said, my voice steady. She looked slightly taken aback, but quickly regained her composure, following me into the living room. I could see the confidence in her eyes, the way she assumed her influence would win out. But this time, I had nothing left to lose. We appreciate everything you've done for Dad, I began, but I can't keep pretending that your help is without expectations. I'm not going to be what you want me to be, and you don't control us anymore. Her face tightened, an unsettling mix of frustration and surprise, and she began to speak, but I held up a hand, stopping her. Dad received a grant. I continued, his treatment will be funded without your help. We're not dependent on you any longer. Her expression shifted rapidly, anger, shock, and finally a flicker of guilt. Lucas, everything I've done, it's been out of love. I've only ever wanted the best for you. For your father, she stammered, her voice wavering. I thought you understood that. I thought we were close. The vulnerability in her tone felt strangely hollow, like she was trying to convince herself as much as me. You didn't have to reject me like this. I stood firm unyielding. What you've done isn't love. It's control. And it's over. Her face paled, and for a moment, she looked devastated, a spark of realization in her eyes. She opened her mouth as if to argue. But then, seeing the resolve in my expression, she seemed to understand. Without another word, she turned and left, her heels clicking sharply against the floor. When the door shut behind her, the silence that followed felt freeing like a weight had been lifted from the entire house. My father, hearing the exchange, reached for my hand, his grip weak but steady. We didn't say much. The relief in our shared glance said everything. Those scars remained from Aunt Celeste's betrayal. We were finally free to rebuild, united in a way that felt stronger than before. If you like the story, subscribe right away and listen to new stories every day. Let us know what you like the most in the comments.